In researching this video, not only did I data mine the location of almost 700 people, I also discovered the uniquely American legacy of this simple food that's literally out of this world. The Fluffer Nutter Sandwich. An icon of America and a timeless classic that we all grew up eating. That's what I thought, and that's what this woman thought too when she made a video feeding her British boyfriend a peanut butter and fluff sandwich. <laughs> That's really good. That is unbelievable. Wow. A classic American lunch. I might disagree on the categorization. A fluffer nutter is not especially filling or healthy. I'd probably call it a snack or a guilty pleasure, but damn it, it's an American classic. She's got that much right. But wait. The comments. They're. they're disagreeing. Me, an American. Do we actually eat that? Hi, in America. Never seen this in my life, LML. Have you heard of fluff? No. Me, having lived in America my for my entire existence. Nope, never heard of that. I'm sorry, did I miss the born in America let's eat this meeting? Now, I can handle quite a bit, and I know this country is divided on many issues, but this is taking it a step too far. What went wrong in these people's lives for them to be so uneducated? Is this the straw that breaks America's back? I had almost lost hope. But then, a shining light in the distance. Everyone in the comments. I've never seen this food before in my life. People from Massachusetts, eyeball emoji, mouth emoji, eyeball emoji. Seriously? This is a New England thing. Hey, I'm from New England, and of course everybody knows New England is the only part of America that actually matters, so maybe hope isn't lost after all. To test this hypothesis, I knew I had to make a survey. I had to know, once and for all, how much of America knows their fluff. In researching this video, not only did I data mine the location of almost 700 people, I also discovered the uniquely American legacy of this simple food that's literally out of this world. While my original question was fairly simple, the survey actually gathered quite a bit of data, from what state or province you're from, to the availability of fluff at your local supermarket, to the age at which you first learned of the sandwich, and whether you know it by a particular name. To avoid bias, I didn't identify the sandwich at all until several questions in, at which point I listed ingredients but did not give away any colloquial name. One thing we can get out of the way right now is Canada. My original intent was to include Canada in this video because 90% of Canadians live very close to the border, but it turns out the sandwich has almost completely failed to migrate. Out of 102 respondents, 48 had heard of the sandwich, not a terrible percent, but while about half of Canadians have heard of the fluffer nutter, almost none have eaten one. Only 8 out of those 102 reported ever tasting the sandwich. So moving forward, we're going to ignore Canada as usual. The first question I asked after your location was, are you familiar with marshmallow spread, aka fluff? And good news, 92% said yes they were, with about 65% reporting that they had eaten fluff before. Furthermore, 76% of people across America were confident that fluff can be commonly found in local stores, with only about 7% reporting that fluff cannot be easily found. This question is important because it tells us there's no excuse. Buy the fluff. Make the sandwich. Moving forward to the second most important question I asked, are you familiar with this sandwich? In a way, this question is the moment of truth for America as a whole. While I would prefer that you've also eaten the thing before, the YouTube comments were acting as if they had never even heard of it. And as we saw with Canada, even if you've never tasted one, there's a good chance you are at least familiar. 74% Better than Canada, and definitely better than the YouTube commenters would have you believe. Not a perfect score, but hey, I'll take it. At this point, the survey splits. If you indicated that you were unfamiliar with the sandwich, the survey ends. There's no more information I can get from you, and basically, you're dead to me. But if you said you were familiar, that means you might have also eaten the sandwich. So I press on. To the 74% who continued, the first thing I asked was, when did you first learn of the sandwich? 62% said as a child. Honestly, I expected this number to be a little higher. In my head, this is a sandwich you eat after school when you're six. So I wonder how people learned about it as teenagers or adults. One person said from Psych, another said from the book Babysitter's Little Sisters, though granted that one was learned as a child. Somebody in the YouTube comments said Young Sheldon, but I'm going to pretend I didn't see that. 
I also asked whether you knew it by a certain name, and as I expected, Fluffernutter was the name most people had in mind. A decent number of people also typed some variation on peanut butter and fluff sandwiches, which is what I personally call it, but I think of that as more a description and less a name. A minority of people typed Fluffanutter or some variant, and one respondent suggested this may be a Boston thing. Some notable exceptions included the Marsh Butter Sandwich, the PB and Whip, the Fluff Nut, the Marshmallow PBJ, the Elvis, and who can forget the I'm Edgy and Anonymous Online Sandwich, whose real name I will not read out loud. Anyway, now we come to perhaps the most important question of all. Have you ever eaten a Fluffer Nutter? 52% say no, 45% say yes. Remember, this is 45% of people who even knew about the sandwich, so in reality it's about 33% yes. Maybe 34 or 35 at best, considering some people didn't remember. Yeah, I don't know. I was hoping for a higher number, but honestly, if 1 in 3 people in this country have eaten a fluffernutter, I'd say that's a pretty popular sandwich. All that remains is location data. Philip Kennedy, who lives in Kent, Michigan, says he first ate the sandwich at five years old. His mother would often pack it for lunch when he attended Collins Elementary. His homeroom teacher was Miss Adams, and he struggled with mathematics. Joking aside, the survey was fully anonymous. State information was self-reported, and no identity or Google account was linked. Starting off with general knowledge of the sandwich, our heat map begins in New England and moves west. So far, we can see the rumor paying off, with New England in a definitive lead at 95%. The sandwich remains well known throughout the entire East Coast, with no region falling below 70. The numbers trail off as we move west, with the Pacific Coast and Rockies somehow tying at 56.3. That's much lower than our northeastern states, but I'll point out that no region fell below 50, with even the states furthest from New England still having mainstream knowledge of the sandwich. I did poll Alaska and Hawaii, but as their sample size was too small to be accurate, and as they're too geographically isolated to count towards existing regions, I chose to leave them out. Moving on, our second heat map asks have you ever eaten the sandwich? Visually, we immediately see less red, and as we move west, some regions become light pink. The only strong red region remaining is New England, confirming that the sandwich is by far most popular in the northeast corner of the country. Again, eastern states are noticeably redder than western, but only the northeast region maintains a percent above 50, with the core of New England at a very strong 71.4. So why New England? Why is New England so far off from other areas, with an almost universal knowledge of the fluffernutter? Well, as you might expect, that's where it was born. Both marshmallow fluff and the sandwich were invented in Massachusetts, with the recipe being published as World War I was fought. Funny enough, two or three dates are claimed for the commercialization of marshmallow spread, a food whose actual origin is complex. The first was probably sold in 1913 by Emma Curtis and her brother Amory as Snowflake Marshmallow Spread. Archibald Query claims invention of the second product, and it's also through him that the IP was sold to Alan Durkee and Fred Mower in 1920 as Marshmallow Fluff for $500. That's about $7,300, accounting for inflation. The Durkee Mower Company is still the de facto manufacturer of fluff, is still based in Massachusetts, and is still run by the same family a hundred years later. As far as I can tell, it's the only product they make. $500 well spent. Interestingly, one document identified a different product, also called Marshmallow Fluff, which began being sold before 1910 as an ice cream topper. The exact composition of this I could not ascertain, but it was evidently used in soda fountains, suggesting it may have been less viscous. At any rate, Amory was involved in the industry, and it's possible this inspired the Curtis version. The origins of fluff are messy, but it does seem the first evidence of the sandwich can be traced back to Curtis in a 1918 recipe. Originally, it was called the Liberty Sandwich, a name which has completely fallen out of use, with precisely zero people from the survey using it. The name Fluffernutter was not actually coined until the 1960s in an advertising push. Whatever you call it, the peanut butter and fluff sandwich endures as a local tradition. In 2006, legislation was proposed to prevent schools from serving them too often, as apparently some were doing it every day. One politician opposed this idea, declaring that she would quote, fight to the death for fluff. In 2008, and this is the best part, New England native, veterinarian, and astronaut Rick Lenahan ate a fluffernutter aboard the International Space Station. 
New Englander's love for fluff is literally out of this world. That's pretty cool, and it's insane that I was able to have an astronaut back me up. Something like that could only happen once, right? Right? In 2012, Sunny Williams proudly showed off her tub of fluff on NASA's official YouTube channel. But we also have food here from Japan. Uh, we've got Russian food. As you can see, all these red containers are filled with food that's from Russia. Um, and then we get some of our specialty stuff, some things that we like, some of our favorite stuff that your family can send up. In fact, I like fluffernutters, and so I got sent up some fluff so I could make my fluffernutter with peanut butter. Sunny was born in Ohio, but she went to school in, you guessed it, Massachusetts. All I can say is this. To you YouTube scum, to those of you who disparaged my childhood and acted coy around the white goo, who disliked a video about sharing culture between nations, you can ignore my survey. You can pretend that the 683 people who took it just happened to be weirdos. You can tell yourself that you're better than them. Sure. But you can't tell yourself that you're better than two NASA astronauts. You are not better than a doctor flying through space, eating fluff and peanut butter on a flour tortilla. And you will never, ever know the happiness on his face. Finally, I want to shout out Hey Jude 9895 for embodying the attitude we should all have towards life. It's called a fluffernutter, or something like that, and I too had no clue it existed, so it must be a very niche regional thing. On the flip side though, I was so intrigued when I first saw this sandwich that I went to the store and found the fluff to make it with, and not gonna lie, it was tasty.